Well, welcome, church. Welcome. Welcome all locations this morning. We are so glad we get to do this together. And I noticed like online, you guys got to have Brad, which is just amazing. But his mama is online in Ohio today. And so what a special privilege. Betsy, how are you? Um, we miss your spaghetti meatballs, by the way. But, uh, but just beautiful. Paulden location is there in Prescott Valley location. Welcome to you. In Prescott location, welcome to you. And you guys, what fun, what fun. I, felt, I feel like I could just close in prayer and we could all just go home because our souls are full. Um, but we're trusting that God's got some stuff for us as we lean in over the next little bit and, and chat through some stuff. Um, welcome if you're in the room and you're like, um, hey, I, I've, I've never been in this space before. If you're in another location and you're like, I'm, I'm not sure what Heights is or anything like that, I'm going to give you the secret. You ready? This is what we're all about. His name is Jesus, and we believe that he created you and he has a life unique for you to live. And so we're just here to help be guides on that, that journey, help one another lean into that journey and, and go forward. Um, the, the beauty of where we are is we're in a series called Dark Side of the Moon. And, and I'm, I'm, it's not just because I preached last week that I'm going to say this, but if you didn't see it, you got to go back. And the reason you got to go back is because it frames up the entire next five weeks. And last week was an invitation to join the journey. And so if you're here and you go, wow, I didn't see last week, make time, go back. I'll try and catch you up the best I can this morning. But, but we are in this series called Dark Side of the Moon. Where does that come from? I don't know if you know this or not, but when you look at the moon, you only see one aspect of the moon, one side of the moon. That, that it's amazing all the years that you've been alive, that you've looked up into space, that you've only seen this one front side, so to speak, and there's a whole nother far side of the moon that we never get to see. And the reason being just gravi gravity and the way it works and the, the tidal lock rotation, um, that, that what happens is when the earth spins and the moon moves and rotates, we only get to see one side. And, and so when we get to see the other side, which in 1968 was the first time humans got to go around the backside of the moon and take a look. Before that, Luna 3 had sent some, back some pictures, and we got to see these kind of fragmented, if you think of the old printers that would print them out, kind of image, imagery of the dark side. But, but when the first humans went back there, and their response was astonishment and amazement of who God is. And so you'll see on screen, there's, there's two moon, two sides to the moon. And on the right side is the dark side or the far side of the moon. And you'll notice that there's craters. And specifically, some of those craters are so vast in size that you could fit the Grand Canyon inside of them. And why is that significant to you? I find it fascinating that the side we see is kind of like the better side of the moon, so to speak. And on the other side is kind of the scarring and the, the cratering and the, the damage. Um, the, the, there's all kinds of theories of when and how that happened. And it, it makes me think of us. That so often in life, we can present ourselves like the left side of this picture. We, we get an image that we, we project outward. If you've been around church for a while, you learn how to say I'm fine really quick when you walk in the building because somebody's going to ask you how you're doing today and you're like, I'm good, right? And, and so there's this reality that if we're not careful, what happens is we begin to live out of this facade, this masking, if you like, of, hey, this is the image I want to project. But on the other side, there's all of this deep, deep um, scarring and deep, um, moments of life that have happened. And some of those you may know about. Some of those you may have pushed aside for so many years. Some of those may be decades old. But we believe that all of us um, have a side to us that God wants to reveal. And we're calling that the dark side. Uh, if you were here last week, you got to hear part of my journey that I'm unpacking. I'm, I'm kind of tired, by the way, of God making me live the sermons I preach. It'd be much better if I could just preach them and not worry about having to do them. Um, but God's like, no, that's not the way it works, slugger. Like, you're, you're going you're gonna to live what I'm, I'm asking you to speak. And so for me, something that God's been revealing is about 38, 39 years ago, something happened to me. And you can hear more about that story last week, but it's still playing out today in the way that I act. 
And, and God's beginning to deal with some of those behaviors in me. And I just wonder for you, what do you project? What, what do you know about the dark side of you? And, and last week was kind of this invitation into, hey, God, you know what? If that's true, if there's a side of me, and sometimes you know it, right? You're sitting in this room right now, and I believe the Holy Spirit's alive and well, and he's working, and he's, he's kind of nudging you right now because you're like, I've got a secret I've been holding for a decade, or I've got a secret I've been holding for 24 hours of, of things that I've done that aren't okay. And you're living with that. Well, you just need to know something. And when we talk about this life in Jesus, that the truth, Jesus claimed that the truth sets you free. And what he also claimed with that is that, that when Jesus gets involved, that when you are free, you are free completely. Because who the Son sets free is free completely. Nothing held back. And so for you, you may be sitting here and you've got secrets and you've got this whole thing that you've built. You just need to know something today. God already knows. It's not a surprise. So, so last week, if you remember, our anchor verse was in Psalm 139. And verse 23, it says this in the top of it, and we're only taking the first line right now, but search me, God, and know my heart. So last week, if you were here, was an invitation. God, I want to give you permission like we need to, right? He's God. He can do whatever he wants. But we're asking him, God, I want you to search me, and I want you to know every part. I am giving you permission. I am surrendering myself to you to have your way in me and search every part of me. And God, would you begin to surface and reveal and show me what is the dark side of me? How do I know you got a dark side? You're still alive. Right? And on this planet, in the shape that this planet is, in the shape that humanity is, it won't be until we're restored back to what God originally intended, that we get glorified bodies. That, that, until that point, we're working on stuff. Until that point, God is shaping us to be more like the person of Jesus. And so we just need to know that, that God wants to, to deal with our dark side. And so last week, if you were here, some of you stepped into, hey, God, I am ready. I surrender to, to that invitation. Now, this week, you could couple this way. Um, and the whole aspect of moon and space and all of that, this one's titled, if you're taking notes, you're titling this one, Before You Launch. Okay, before you hit that master ignition sequence to go, we need to slow down and we need to go, hey, before we hit that launch sequence, there's some stuff we need to have in place. And so we're going to answer two questions today. Okay, first one is this, what's my base? What's my base? And the second one, Who's in my crew? Who's in my crew? What's my base and who's in my crew? Before we hit that ignition, master ignition sequence to launch into the dark side of the moon. And so today we're leaning into um, Psalm 23. If you've been around church, you're like, oh, I love Psalm 23, right? Psalm 23 verse one says this, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Got it? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Got it? The Lord, because clearly you don't have it. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Got it? All right, I'm out. Just kidding. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, something that you need to know about the trip to the dark side of the moon, only you can take it. Right? And what I mean by that is this, that only you can set your base in place. What's my base? Only you can, can make the choice to take those words. The Lord is, and how do I know? Because of pronouns. The Lord is my, my shepherd. That's a declaration that you make. That the Lord is my shepherd. Who is the Lord? The Lord is God. As you get to the, the New Testament, it becomes clear that it's a person of Jesus. Jesus is my shepherd. Jesus is my Lord and my Shepherd. What is that moment? That moment is a declaration from you on a personal level that Jesus is my Lord. Guess what that means? He has ownership to everything. 
that I'm surrendering it all to you. You do with me and you do with my life whatever you want to do with my life. It's yours. You are my Lord. Jesus is my shepherd. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd protects, a shepherd cares, a shepherd looks after, a shepherd makes sure that there's provision, a shepherd knows what's best, a shepherd leads out. Jesus is my shepherd. What I'm saying in that moment is, Jesus, I am, I am handing all of this to you. This thing called life, this thing called me, the way you've wired me, the way you've made me, I, I surrender it to you. And the one that does that, it says, you lack nothing. You lack nothing. So maybe just flipping that, if you're in the room and you go, John, man, I'm not sure. You're across the screen in a different location. And you go, I'm not sure, John. I'm not sure about that whole, like, Lord is my shepherd thing. I don't know where I fall with that. Then you just need to know something today. That something else is your Lord and something else is your shepherd. And so you're going to lack something. Because when Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my shepherd, it says that I lack nothing. And that's true today. It it reminds me of how you build a rocket. And so the the Saturn V rocket um, is built in a hangar. And we have some imagery of what that hangar looks like, but but it's, it's built piece by piece inside of this hangar. What you need to know about that is when it's built, it's like 36 stories high. And it's not like the hangar just opens and it launches from that point. But the base that, the, that this, this rocket is built on is key to what happens next. Because I don't know if you've ever done Legos. They have to get this rocket out of this building. And I don't know how it works in your house, but at times we've done Legos in ours and you build a tower and then mom looks at it because it's on the kitchen counter and she goes, that can't stay there. And then the kids look at dad. Dad, you gonna move it? And then then you ever tried to pick up a Lego tower? Yeah, good luck getting it to where you're going. Well, this thing, right? This thing, 36, 36 stories high, moves, has to move three and a half miles, which we have on the next picture. You can get a, a view of how far that is. And the base that they build this on, it's called the crawler. And it literally crawls under a mile an hour. This thing thing crawls along. And you'll notice on this picture, it, it actually goes up an incline to get to the launch pad. And this thing has to adjust to make sure the Legos don't fall, so to speak. But what you're looking at is that rocket alone is half a million pounds. Couple that with that tower that's next to it. The tower is 11 million pounds. The crawler itself, that base that crawls along that becomes the the launch pad that it's going from, that crawler that that crawls along is 6.6 million pounds. My brain can't even begin to comprehend all that. But what's fascinating to me is this, as they move this rocket into place, and it's moving it under a mile per hour, there will be a point in this journey when that, the astronauts, when they're in space, will go 25,000 miles per hour. Can I say this before we go to the dark side of the moon? It's okay to slow down to go fast. And by slow down, I mean this. What's your base? What's your base today? Because if it's anything other than the person of Jesus Christ, then I would recommend not going to the dark side of the moon because there's a good chance you'll have a false launch. But what is that that base that's underneath you? And in this verse one, it goes, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. That's our base. The base for launch to go to the dark side to, to we've given the invitation. We're on the trip. Right? You accepted the trip last week. Now we're on it. But before we launch, make sure your base is in place. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Verse 2, he makes me, this shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He makes me lie down. You know why he makes me lie down? Because I'm dumb and I don't rest. Right? And he goes, no, no, no. I got your best. I got your best interest in mind. I'm going to make you rest. I'm going to lead you beside still, still waters. He refreshes my soul. Anybody want a God who refreshes your soul? 
Anybody want a God that, that leads you? And when he leads you, he goes, you know what? The best thing for you is to take a nap. I'm like, I'm in with that God. In fact, this afternoon, me and that God will have a good time, right? Because, because we're longing for, we're longing for a shepherd who cares, who protects, who gives us, provides what we need when we need it. And, and he says he, he guides along. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his namesake. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along for whose sake? For his sake. You know why we're going to the dark side of the moon, right? It's for the Lord's sake. It's not yours. Oh, we think it's for us, right? Because we'll become more holistic and, and that's about healing, about being a better human. No, 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 no. Listen, when you get to the dark side, here's what's fascinating. The things in your life that have been difficult, the things in your life that are hidden, the things in your, your life that are, God's going to unearth are the very things that makes you unique and the very things that will relate to somebody else in a way that somebody else never could. And what you'll find is that what God wants to do is he wants to use you, all of you, when it's brought into the light. Why? So that he can reach the next person across. Why? For his namesake, that he gets glory for what's been done in you. It's for his, it's for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Even though I walk through the dark... Wait, 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 wait. We like the green pastures. But now you're saying, even though I walk through the darkest valley, key word there, through. Don't miss the through. You're not meant to stay in the darkest valley. But the shepherd actually leads you through the darkest valley. Right? And, he, and what's the promise? The promise is that he is with you. He is present. His presence is with you in the darkest space. What do we know about our shepherd? Is that when we take this journey, when we step on this journey of life and life throws out us what it does and we get into those darkest valleys, we know that the shepherd is with us. Why? Because he's promised that. What does he have with him? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your, your rod gives me protection. It, it beats away things that would want to harm, right? And, and your staff, that like hook, gets me around the neck to make sure I don't end up where I'm not supposed to be. He pulls me back to where he needs me to be. Why? Because he's leading and he's guiding. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, we, we would rewrite that. God, you take care of my enemies and then let's have lunch, right? God, you take care of all them. Give them a beat down. And then let's you and me sit down in, in, in your presence. And he says, no, that's not the way this works. He says, in the presence of the very things that want to harm you, we're going to sit at a table. But I'm the one that protects you from all of them. They can't touch you. Why? Because I'm, I'm your shepherd. I got you. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Your goodness and your love is pursuing you. You know that today, right? That God's goodness and his love, old school, if you're a King James person, you're like, where's the mercy, right? Because love was translated mercy. God's goodness and love is what? Pursuing you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, his goodness and his love is pursuing you. It's chasing you down. It's following you. It's this beautiful imagery of a shepherd who his goodness and his love, you can't get away from. It, it's got you. And then it ends up with, how long do they follow you, by the way? All the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I got to reading this. And I had a really, it's not a profound thought, y'all. It's super simple. And you may sit here and go, John, that, you were right. That's super simple. That's okay. I'm a simple guy. But as I was reading this, I went, you know, if you got a shepherd, a shepherd has sheep. And so as the sheep is going through the darkest valley, guess who's going along with the sheep? The other sheep. And the sheep are going through the valley together. The sheep are at the quiet waters together. The sheep 
And all of a sudden I went, Lord, what you're talking about here at table, who else has sat at your table? Who's in your crew? If Jesus is your base, then who's in, who's in your crew, so to speak? Who are the sheep that are going along with you with the shepherd? Who is it that does life with you? Who, who is it that meets you in the different spaces that the shepherd leads you? Who is it that's breathing life into you because the shepherd's using them? Who's in your crew? I don't mean to be mean, but I'm just going to be honest. If you're here today and you go, John, I don't, I don't have a crew. I don't have, because, because the astronauts, they went together. They did the journey together. Who, who's doing the journey with you? Who's in your crew? And if you don't have a crew, then outside these doors after this service, there's a whole bunch of people waiting for you to go over and say, I need a crew. And they'll help you figure out how to, how to navigate that. Life groups for us are a space. They're, they're called life groups for a reason. They bring life. It provides a crew that we walk alongside. So what's your base and who's in your crew? And it was, it was February. I, I got the privilege of hanging out with Brad um, in February, and, and as I was sitting with him and he was just telling his story, I just realized, like, I was a part of some of it, like, physically, and then others from a distance going, man, I, I, I heard that. But as he unpacked it, I started to go, man, that's amazing, and it's so encouraging what God has done through, through your life. And as we were preparing for this, and wouldn't you know it, as the Lord has it, that week two of Dark Side of the Moon, Brad just happens to, Brad and Courtney and their kiddos just happened to be in town for a wedding. And there was a moment where I went, man, this, this, this is for the church for this weekend. And those of you who don't, don't know Brad, um, Brad was on staff here for 10 years and um, just, just an amazing, amazing um, time here. And then God's moving to St. Louis and God just blessing what's happening there. Um, but I, I would love if we could just lean in, and I want to give you a picture, okay, through story, I want to give you a picture of what it looks like for the Lord to be your shepherd, for your base to be in place, and for your crew to be along, and, and what it means for the Lord to lead through those darkest valleys. So if you would, would you welcome Brad back? Hey, bud. Um, so, fun story worth telling. When I first got to the church, uh, youth was meeting in H3, and our offices were upstairs. And so I'd met Brad, but never heard him sing or never heard him play a guitar, and, and we're getting ready for Wednesday night. And it's like, you know, 3 in the afternoon, and we do youth at 6, 6.30. And, and it sounds like he's, like, trying to figure out how to play the guitar, and singing in cartoon voices. Because there was a song back then that, what if cartoons got saved? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yabba dabba -loo -yabba yeah. or something? <laughs> Should we do that? Maybe later. No. Yeah, maybe later. Encore. Encore. Uh, but, but it was just like, that was my first, like, wait, this guy's going to lead in three Who's hours? Like, what's going to happen? Why yeah. am I serving? And then he's just got all kinds of energy and jokes. And for the next three hours, it was literally like comedy as he was rehearsing for. And that was, that was where it all started. It was, it was great. But I have a serious question okay, for you. Because I know there's other people in here. And they, football season is coming. Yes. And they want to place a bet. Okay. So can I put my money on the Browns to win the 100%, Super Bowl? 100%. 100%. If you're a better, if you're on the fence, Cleveland Browns, 2023 Super Bowl champion. Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Listen, you laugh, but until we turn it around, you guys are going to know, you know, who the real champion is. Hey, you know, we have some extra quarterbacks we could send Easy, easy. All right. This, just, yeah. Can we move on? You know, like, yes, we should. We should. It's just mean. We should. We digress. Steelers. Um, Steelers suck. <clears throat> Hate the Steelers. We should move on. <laughs> I'm, fi I'm filtering right uncomfortable. now. I'm, fil I'm filtering at this moment. The Browns preseason so, are on right now, so I'm just going to start watching that anyway. Okay, but. perfect. Um, so here's, here's what happened. So it was February, and we sat down, and you started to unpack the timeline of events yeah. that God has led you through. Yeah. 
um, one that obviously started here. Yeah. But I would love if we could just start yeah. start there. For sure. Uh, first, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Heights, we do love you. Yeah. It it's really hard, by the way. To- <laughs> Just this is very special second home to us. It will, it will always be. Um, we love it here. Um, yeah, so if we kind of rewind uh, back to 2013, uh, there was kind of four major events that kind of happened um, to, to me personally and then, and then within my family. Uh, about a six-year span starting in 2013, and as many of you know, um, back in 2013, we lost 19 heroes in a, in a Yarnell fire, and uh, one of those being a dear friend of mine uh, named Clayton Witted. And uh, Clayton and I actually served here at Heights. He was our he was our yep. middle school pastor at the time, and I was I was doing. So he was the middle school guy before I got. Yep, here. that's right, yeah. that's right. And then he went back into into the hot shots. And anyway, uh, talk about um, a tragedy, but also um, how it shook a community and shook um, a whole bunch of lives that connected in so many ways. And I think that was the first real tragedy that I experienced personally as somebody close to me. And so uh, kind of started this journey of, wow, this is big and this is really hard, but I don't really know how to grieve. I don't really know. I don't understand how this process works. And so, um, you know, a couple of years later, um, it was it, the second kind of the second traumatic event was my wife um, actually lost her dad. Um, uh, he, he actually took his life. Um, back in 2016. And so that was a year before um, we, we moved to St. Louis. So, How long did you guys been married at that point? At that point, we were married two years. Yeah, so okay. two years. And, um, and, and, and it was, I mean, there's a lot of layers to that. But the, the, I think for me then it was personally, it was, okay, now I got to care for my wife through a grieving process that I still don't understand. I'm avoiding pain at all costs. And so, Brad, how by do, the way, is the most positive person you have ever met in your life. Like, seriously. Yeah. And I, and I think that is kind of became this, like, facade for me. It was like, I just got to be upbeat and just, mm. you know, go through it. But not through it, just go around it, you know. Um, and then, uh, man, so then walking through that journey with her, but then also trying to process with her. Uh, two years later, 2018, um, we had another pretty significant tragedy that happened to my family. My, my brother-in-law, my, my oldest sister, Grace, she lost her husband, uh, Adam, unexpectedly. Uh, he was 39 years old, left my sister um, um, with four kids under 10 years old. And Adam was one of those people, like, closer than a brother, like, yeah. like was my older brother, like, even more so than other brother than to my brothers. And we're all really close to each other. I remember and, you talking about Adam a lot. Yeah, and... and and talk about like, so at this time we're in St. Louis, but, but that was one that shook our family to our core. So I, I started looking back through the progression. I was like, okay, close friend, family member, parent, and now like a brother, you know? And then it was like, okay, God, one, I, you have my attention, but I also, I'm going to keep running. I got to keep running from the grief and the loss that's in front of me. I don't know how to deal with it. And so 2018, and by the end of that year, uh, 2019, um, I felt like um, it's kind of a year of change. Everything's going to get better. Everything's going to be great. Sure enough, uh, the fourth tragedy that happened, um, my wife and I found out uh, in May of 2019, we were pregnant with our second child. Super excited. 13-week appointment. We find out we're having a baby boy. We're super thrilled, super excited. In that appointment, though, it was one of those like sinking feelings where you know something's not quite right. And uh, my wife and I ended up being in this, in, this, um, in this hospital room and then doctor after doctor walks in and something's not right. And so we had found out early in his development that, that, there, that there was something that most likely would not be able to live outside the womb. And so that happened in August when we, we had found out. Um, and then it was this four month journey of we feel baby, we named him Louie, we felt Louis kicking. We felt his heartbeat, but it was appointment after appointment, week after week of, we're not going to get the results we want, and we're not going to meet our baby, but we got to be hopeful, wow. and we got to hang on. And that was the journey for me that, again, the progression of tragedy, this one was like as close to home as possible, because I have a wife that is carrying a child we're not, most likely not going to meet. We're praying for a miracle. God, please save but the miracle wasn't what we had hoped for. 
And so we ended up losing Louis. Uh, Courtney went into labor with him on November 30th of 2019. And uh, he was 33 weeks old. We had about two hours with him until, until he passed and went to be with Jesus. And, and, and that year of 2019 was by far the worst year of my life in so many ways. You have all these different really hard things that you're walking through, but then the, also the gift, and, and I'll, I'll go back to earlier in that year of 2019. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever done like a word of the year thing, mm-hmm. but there's this kind of a cool thing goes around that you kind of pick a word for the year, pray about it. And uh, the word for the year that I felt like God was giving me for 2019 was the word present. And it was mostly, I was like, I just got to be more present with Jesus. I'm running from pain. I don't want to go there still, but I just need to be more present with my wife. I just, you know, all these things. Well, then we and walked. That, and that started before you knew. Yes, that started before yeah. we, hit, we had knew yeah. we, were, we were pregnant with Louis. And then, wouldn't you know it, 11 months into the word presence, present, I'm walking through this, you know, unbelief, this doubt, God miracle, baby's born. And then this month of December, how God changed the word present to presence. And it was his presence that changed everything. And through all four of those, I just remember my wife and I literally on our couch the entire month of December, weeping, um, journaling, just holding on to each other for dear life because in the prayer of the miracle, we actually experienced the miracle of God's presence through all of it. And so one, not to just change it to the positive side, but the, the grief it actually then led to another step, which it happened yeah, in 2020. So, so, like, we, obviously, this morning we're talking about the idea of, okay, in the darkest valley, the promise is his presence. Yeah. And so you're yeah. now December, yeah. and you're feeling, okay, what I thought this was at the beginning of the year is now totally different. Yeah. Talk to me about, because I know when we were chatting, you, you mentioned, so in the midst of all that grief and pain, mm-hmm. You're experiencing this presence of God, yeah. and then you lead, you and Courtney lead, yeah. which I don't know how <laughs> you guys did that, but you lead worship in December, yeah. but there's unbelief. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Like that whole, like, how does that? Man, yeah, so, man, if I can get through it. Uh, that December, again, this gift of time off, time off stage, um, really soul searching, Courtney and I both felt like God was telling us to lead our church in worship, coming three weeks out of, you know, um, losing our son. And uh, it was just after Christmas of 2019, and um, I remember we were leading the song Waymaker. And there's an amazing bridge that really carried us through that season. It was, even though I don't see it, you're working. And God, even if I don't feel you, you're working, and that you never stop working, that you don't make mistakes. But all of the doubt and unbelief that I had been wrestling with for so long, God used in that moment to be strength, that he walked us through the deepest, darkest valleys to help us find life again. Wow. And knowing his presence was in the midst of all of it is what changed everything. And so coming out of that season, uh, 2020, get back to work, uh, trains moving a million miles an hour. I'm not. I finally hit. Yeah, you said you said you felt like you were in slow motion, and yeah. everything else is just. Yes. Well, slow motion. January, February, and as we know, March of 2020, a pandemic happens. And honestly, I I could say this freely. The pandemic ended up being one of the greatest blessings for me personally because it made me so isolated that I saw how unhealthy I truly was. Wow. And it took a conversation with my wife on our front porch, which she's amazing, by the way. My wife, Courtney, I love you more than you will ever know. Sitting on the conversation on the front porch, and she said, this cannot go on. Something has to change now. And that led to a conversation with some dear friends of ours um, who actually are counselors here in Prescott, um, Joey and Robin Kaufman. And And they journeyed with you. Yeah, yes. When Courtney's When Courtney's passed, passed, yep. They took us on a retreat um, to work through some of that stuff. So we had this amazing relationship with them. But then it started this journey with me, with Joey, of I I don't know. I don't even know how I'm living right now. (laughs) I'm just kind of getting by. But I'm also on stage leading people in worship. 
and I'm struggling to believe all of these things I'm singing about. I'm a pastor. Like, <laughs> that's messed up. But what I had learned was the journey in itself was what God was using in those deepest, most broken moments. His presence in the valley was, and, and, and Joey and, and some other people were sharing with me too, was I finally accepted the fact that it was okay to not be okay. You ever heard of that before? It's okay to not be okay. I never, I never experienced that before. I'm like, wait, I can't just be, yeah, Brad, awesome. It's like, no, actually, it was actually really nice to not be that and actually to go down into the depths of some things that I had been really struggling with. And that's where I feel like God showed me his presence in the valley. Um, and that's why I love this verse that we're talking about today too. And I, so when, one of the connections you made for me as we were chatting in preparation was the idea of the still water yeah. in the valley. Talk me through that, man. Yeah, so I had a, a dear friend, spiritual director, friend of mine, um, that had, had gave me this picture of Psalm 23 I'd never seen before, but he was talking about as we are led to, as we are led through the deepest, darkest valleys, just picture Jesus the shepherd. You see the mountain, everything's awesome up there, but you're going down. The shepherd you're following, it's really dark, it's really scary, there's a lot of unknown, there are wolves around us, right, in the presence of my enemies, they're ready to take you out, but the shepherd, he knows exactly where he's leading you to. And in that moment, that gave me a lot of clarity to go, I have to trust the shepherd. I don't know if I've really trusted him through all of these seasons of my life to go, he's leading me to the darkest valley, one, what's in the deepest of the darkest of valleys? Water. He had to show me what rest Such was. Such a great picture. He had to show me that you could actually find life here. And it's scary. It's dark. There's a lot of unknown. And trust me, you wouldn't wish it on anybody. But to know that he's been there. And I, dude, I love Psalm 23 because we can't forget Psalm 22, right? Yep. David, he's got this amazing picture. But he's Psalm 22, he's in the same place as all of us. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me? Through all of these things, why, where are you? That was my entire 2019. And then we see the shift and we see him walk through the darkest valley and he will fear no evil for I am with you. My rod and your staff, they will comfort me. And it's not perfect, y'all. Like it's not, like we all know this. We all have seasons of life that we go through. But that was enough for me to connect of, Jesus, you really are who you say I are. Even though I don't see you or feel you, I know you're working. And man, it's been a journey since. And yeah. I, I, love, um, I love that imagery. And then I love the idea of how God redeems everything. Yeah. yeah right. And, yeah. and listening to, you know, you're leading in that December with Courtney and there's unbelief. And I don't know, like, if I believe these words. And yet there was a young man there. Yeah. Um, tell us about Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. So, man. We're leading that song, Waymaker. This guy just so happened to be the first time at our church. Um, he connected with my story uh, just out of, he goes, I can't believe a pastor is like sharing like what he's really going through. <laughs> like, and um, we ended up getting coffee and he said he's a drummer. So I'm like, oh yeah, I love musicians. Let's connect. And he had shared with me, he said, I'm not really into the Jesus thing. Like I don't, I've never been baptized. I've never really been to church, but there's something about you that I just feel connected to. And so I just started walking life with this guy for six months or so. And the next year, and I remember him calling me one day and he goes, I don't know why I'm calling you, but I'm just going through a lot and just wanted to talk to somebody. And I ended up praying with this guy on the phone. And he's like, no one has ever prayed for me before. I've never, I've never had anyone. Pray. He goes, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> you know? And, and it gave me it's this. It's okay. None of us know what to do in that <laughs> moment. True, so it's, true. it's all right. It's true. Yeah. Receive. Do I close my eyes? Do I stay open? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But Jeremy had this like this, and then we just started walking, and then and then and then Feb it was actually February 2020, 2021. I'm sorry. Um, I had just gotten off of COVID. I just recovered from COVID, and it was my first Sunday back. And we're leading this song called I Surrender, and he's playing drums. And he's weeping through the song, I Surrender. Because Holy Spirit moment, he broke in my arms, confessed that Jesus is Lord in between wow. our services. A year later, I got to, uh, sorry, two months later in, on Easter, I got to baptize him. And so this, this guy has a complete life transformation. Like I've never seen anything like it, but how, 
how it used our story with our son, Louis, and that God doesn't make mistakes, you know? Yeah. And in the midst of that, you don't see it, but you see, you know, I had a, another friend of mine share this, this amazing phrase of don't miss the forest for the trees. And I love that picture because it's true. In our circumstances, we just see the tree right in front of us. But there's this beautiful forest that God has created for us to enjoy. And we can't miss all that he is doing in the midst of all that. So beautiful. And one last, one last piece to this that I love when we met in February is what God's doing in you for the future. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of you guys remember our friend Justin Unger. Yeah. Um, he started this ministry that basically pastors worship pastors called Likewise Worship. And uh I remember in 2020, we were walking on the beach in California for a retreat. And he was like, hey, man, what do you think about St. Louis launch and doing this ministry? And I was like, no. In 2020. <laughs> like, 2020, yeah, right. <laughs> Pandemic, <laughs> shut down. I'm like, it ain't happening. But it was this two-year journey of soul work of like, God, you're preparing something. I don't see it yet. I don't understand it yet. But I got to do hard things and I got to be willing to go there. And I felt like my wife and I had prayed about it. And, and the, it was the fall of last year. We felt like God was calling us in our brokenness, in our story of connecting with other worship pastors and their spouse, something Courtney and I are doing together, which is amazing. Um, but we just want to love on these worship pastors. Like we know, we get it. Like we, we know what you're going through, but we also have a story that maybe we can connect and how can we help you in that yeah. community as well. So. And I, I, love, I love you guys that as we sit here, in a conversation about the dark side of the moon yeah. and the reality that your dark side is what makes you unique. And God wants to not only heal you through that dark side, but he wants to redeem it. And your story is yeah. this beautiful picture of God redeeming yeah. this broken, painful, to now the Jeremy's of the world, yeah. to now future worship leaders mm -hmm. who are in the same spot going, That's right. I'm singing, I don't even believe That's it. Right. What do I do? Yeah. And getting to walk, I think it's just a beautiful picture of... That's it, John. And I, I'll say to you, the, the, if there's ever a time the enemy has gotten a hold of his church, of his people, is isolation, yeah. right? We've seen yeah. what it done in a, in a pandemic. But exactly what you're saying, life group, community, yeah. the people actually need your story. This is the story of God, y'all. We live in the story of God. So why, why aren't we being willing to go there? And why aren't we doing life? Professional help, 100% recommended. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you've been through some stuff, professional people are there to help you walk through that. But then also people in community that want to walk life with you and it's all of our broken pieces, you know, yeah. together that, that makes something beautiful. Yeah, I love it. So church, as we wrap up, what's your base today? The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Can you sit today and go, the Lord is my shepherd? If not, I encourage you to wrestle with that. In these next moments, as we get to worship together in all locations, like wrestle with, is, is the Lord my shepherd? Am I willing to surrender to his leadership in all areas, including a trip to the dark side of my soul? And then couple that with who's in my crew. You're in control of that. You have options that you're in your hands today as you leave here, as you jump on the app, as you talk online, as you leave the PV location, the Paulden location, you have the option of going, who's in my crew? And I'm gonna make sure I got people. I, I love in your story, man, the, the relationships that started a decade ago that God used you know, in 2020 to still bring healing and new relationships that God brought. And, and for us, church, watch your base. Before we launch, watch your base. Who's in my crew? You're not alone. Not alone. And we're better together. Yeah. Better together, absolutely. And so would you pray with me? God, thank you so much. Thank you this morning for showing up. Thank you for being in this space. Thank you for being a God that's worth following. Thank you for the truth that even as we're here, your goodness and your love are chasing us down. God, thank you that this morning we get to be here with confidence. Thank you for Brad and Courtney and their family. Thank you for Brad's honesty to share the broken parts, the dark side 
of where life's been. And yet, God, at the same time, we get to see the beauty of a shepherd who guides and leads for his namesake, who walks us through the valley to still water, who sets a table where we get to rest and provision is provided in the midst of our enemies. God, I pray over our church family that we wouldn't leave this space today in whatever location, whatever space that is, God, don't let us leave. Don't let us move until we figure out what's my base. And can I surrender to the leadership of Jesus, my Lord? And God, would you convict us of who's in my crew? And God, if you need to add to our crew, would we be willing to walk into that today? Thank you for putting us in a family. Thank you that there's a cross that holds defeat of an enemy for all time. Thank you that we are on the other side of the cross today. Thank you that we know, God, just as that cross proves you, you are the one that the battle belongs to. And so, God, would you, in these next moments as we stand and we sing and we respond to you, our shepherd, and we declare the battle belongs to you, would you remind us we fight in a posture of surrender where we let you lead no matter where it goes. And so thank you for loving us. Thank you for goodness and mercy and love that pursue us today. And everybody said, amen.